easier on our speaker to be able to focus in and connect with us if we would be so kind as to do that. Amen. As you're moving, I want to say that uh, Brother and Sister Khan are not with us tonight. Um, one of the pastors in the district uh, was kind enough to reach out to them and say, hey, I've got a uh, timeshare in Branson and uh, if you want to go stay in it for free, help yourself. And so they did exactly that. And they were kind enough to take Jude with them for a couple of days. Brother Smith just asked me, said, what does it feel like to be kid free? And I said, quiet. <laughs> it's been kind of quiet around our house and it's also been clean around our house. All the parents say amen. Praise the Lord. So since Brother and Sister Con are not here, we want to hold them up before the Lord like we always do. Would you lift your voice with me in prayer right now? Let's welcome the presence of the Lord and pray for our pastor as we open this service. Father, we love you. We bless and honor you right now. We thank you, God, for the goodness of your mercy. Thank you, as Sister Ludi Metters used to say, for life and health and strength and a sound mind and for loading us today with daily benefits. I praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. It never runs out, God. We cannot exhaust your mercy, and I'm so grateful for that today. I thank you, Lord, for bringing us to this place tonight to hear, Lord, God, your word. I thank you for opening our ears to hear and touching our hearts, Lord, to be receptive tonight. I pray that you would bless our speaker tonight, Lord, that you would put your mouth, Lord, that you would put your word in her mouth, Lord. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. We pray for Brother and Sister Khan right now. We ask, Lord, that this would be a time of rest and refreshing for them, that you would strengthen and encourage them. Bless them physically, Lord. I pray that you would keep your hand of protection upon them. We thank you for it, Lord, and we give honor to you tonight. We give praise to you, Lord Jesus, for you alone are worthy. You alone are good. Hallelujah. Can we just clap our hands and give the Lord praise right now?
that together right now. Can we just stand and just give him praise right now? As we were just singing, truly we are in his presence right now, and we love you, Lord. Come on, open up your mouth, beloved. Open up your mouth, apostolics, and give him praise right now. Come on, let's, let's everyone acknowledge him. Let everything that hath breath praise you, the Lord. The Lord is worthy. We praise you right now, mighty God. Hallelujah to the great King. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord our God. Wonderful, mighty God. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you. You may be seated. Uh, Amen. If our usher would just come to the front right now. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit. and We'll just uh, pass the offering around tonight and let you give that way a little departure from tradition. So come on up, Brother Marion. Thank you, sir. Uh, Amen. Everybody say, Lord, bless the offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Just go ahead and pass that around. So I want us to be mindful of a couple of announcements. uh, and We're going to go ahead and uh, turn the service over to Brother and Sister Smith. But I wanted to cover these real quick as you are giving in the offering. August 12th at 6.30 is going to be youth hyphen and singles prayer. We're encouraging all hyphen age group as well as the youth to join us for prayer at 6.30. Amen. We really appreciate if the hyphen group would come together for this prayer meeting and help mentor the youth age group. Uh, Tonight we have Brother and Sister Smith, as we have been announcing. If you don't know it yet, that's who these fine folks are here. They've been here twice already now, so this is our third session. And uh, they preached for us back at the first part of the year. So uh, they're no strangers at this point. They're just like home folks around here. Amen. Uh, Bible quizzing. Um, If you haven't talked with Brother Palmer, if you're interested, Brother David Palmer, that is, in helping, um, then uh, please see him. Uh, We want to uh, get a program started again around here. We have deviated from that. And if you would, those of you that are in this section, if you would come on over to the middle and join us, uh, that would be much appreciated. I think it's going to help here in a little bit. There's something interesting that's going to happen with all these balloons. I don't know what it is, but I'm looking forward to it. So I I don't want you all to miss out by being over there in the side section away from the action. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Um, So... uh, We want to get Bible quiz going again. We want to invest in our children. It's a great program to put God's word not only in their life, but also in our life. Because mom and dad, we're going to have to be working with them. Amen. So Midwest Ladies Conference, going to be here before we know it. Uh, There's a sign-up sheet out on the board. There are perks for participating. Uh, So... uh, If you have any questions about that, please see Sister Sheila. She is our conference coordinator. Does a great job. Uh, August 20th and 21st, that's Tuesday and Wednesday, an off night for us. We're going to be having revival with Brother Caleb Herring. Uh, So please plan that into your schedule, and let's be here to uh, see what God wants to do. We will take the 22nd, which is Thursday off, and then the 23rd. We're having a district rally here. This is a back-to-school youth rally, but it's not just for young people. It'd be all right for folks like me that have gray hair to be here. My wife cut my hair last night, and I was looking at it as it was falling down, and I said, man, that's a lot of gray hair. And she didn't encourage me. She said, yes, it is. <laughs> so, But it'd be all right if you've got gray hair if you come to the youth rally. Uh, and that'll be August 23rd at 7 p.m. right here. Uh, that Sunday, we're also going to have Brother Caleb Herring with us. Um, and August 28th is our deadline to purchase Gary's Berries tickets for only $10. After that, the price nearly doubles. So go ahead and buy your ticket now. Everybody say amen. Praise the Lord. 
So I don't have any further announcements, and it looks like the offering has been received. Does everybody have a handout tonight? If you don't have a handout, raise your hand, and we'll get you one. All right. Wonderful. Well, without any further ado, Brother Smith, why don't you come and greet us? Take your liberty tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's good to be back with y'all here on this midweek service in the middle of August. How many had a great day today? How many had a so-so day? How many had a bad day? Only one person. Yeah. A lot of times there's more than that, so I'm glad that but for the most part we all had a pretty good day. But it's good to be with you all here this evening. And uh, this is the third lesson in this series that we've been teaching about how to gain emotional freedom. And so it, how we started this, my wife spoke, then me, and then now she is again tonight, and I will in September. So I'd like for her to come at this time. And I uh, got a very interesting topic uh, here this evening. And so let's just uh, pay attention, listen to her, and like I do, do everything she says. <laughs> Why is everybody laughing for? <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. God is good, isn't he? Amen. And we're so excited to be back, and we so enjoy being here. And as Brother Dormer has said, it's like we kind of feel like family, you know? And it's kind of nice going to the same place a few times and seeing the same faces and all that kind of stuff. So um, I know I've talked about my books before. I want to mention them again. Buried Alive is Miracle Journey of Healing from Borderline Personality Disorder. And uh, Miracle Journey right here. And it's $10 and... Bursting Alive is I've taken the steps of healing and put them into a chapter by themselves, each step, and um, exercises and illustrations and stories. This is 15 together as a set. They are 23. So anyway, our subject tonight is taking every thought captive. And... I know this is probably one of the hardest things to do. And I'm, I'm speaking to myself tonight too because, you know, <laughs> some weeks you don't do so good on taking every thought captive. And um, so <clears throat> this is a really important subject. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Mm. And I know we read that scripture and we see it and we know it. But um, I know as we probably all know, there's a whole different level to actually do it. <laughs> you know? This is one of the most probably important disciplines that we can learn and grow in and it become a lifestyle and becomes part of us and who we are and it becomes automatic a natural response to every thought but that's probably the the little clincher there is a natural thought to every response <laughs> So, you know, our life is full of all kinds of disciplines, and we don't seem to have too much trouble in some of these other ones. <laughs> we don't really have a whole lot of trouble knowing that we need to eat every day, you know. We probably do have a little trouble in knowing what we should eat and how much we should eat and all those kind of things. Working a job, cleaning our house, our cars, schooling, raising our kids. So we have all kinds of disciplines that we're supposed to do every day. And we don't really think about those in particular, really, as we're going through our days. We just do these things. They are natural to us. And we don't have to work hard in order to do them most of the time. But taking every thought captive 
is one of those things that is a very difficult thing to do because most of the time, the thought that comes a lot of times, the ones that are negative seem so very, very real, you know? And we can convince ourselves, even though it may not line up to the Word of God, it may not really even necessarily be true. It may be an assumption, but it can seem so real to us. And so the thought of taking that thought captive at that very moment sometimes doesn't doesn't happen when it needs to happen you know because sometimes we just like to just camp on that thought for a while but what happens when we camp on that thought for a while it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and we grow more upset and more upset and more upset, don't we? You know, we can take a simple thought sometimes. Sometimes something so simple in life. You know, maybe, you know, we could walk into church. I'll use this illustration because I know this has probably happened to everybody. Um, you know, you can be a saint walking into church and maybe pastor passes you on his way out and he's got something on his mind and he's got to get to somewhere but you're thinking he didn't say anything to me <laughs> he didn't shake my hand he didn't talk and so before you know it be it pastor or be it someone else before you know it you had the whole scenario in your mind and you feel like that you've got it exactly right because a lot of times I know as as my husband has talked before when you have a chip on your shoulder it will get knocked off you know and when we have thoughts and stuff going through our mind that are not correct that are not true something else will happen that we think validates that, that thought. And so then what do we do? We say, oh yeah, that thought is right, even though it doesn't line up totally maybe with the word of God, but it lines up with this whole scenario that I'm thinking. And so before we know it, we have a whole scenario, a whole story. And then what do we do? Taking that same example, we come back to church the next night, and what is most likely going to happen? Exactly. Somebody's going to pass by you again. And before you know it, you have the thought of, well, man, nobody in that church really likes me, <laughs> you know? And no, I haven't talked to pastor. We don't know anything. I'm just, I'm just using this as, as an example. So hopefully this doesn't hit you. If it does, then maybe we could just think on it. Because <laughs> I know some of these things hit me. <laughs> and so uh, anyway, looking at our thought process, and the scenarios that we create in our minds sometimes dictates how our days are, how our days are going to be. So if we don't learn to take every thought captive, number one, you will not grow spiritually to your fullest potential. And number two is you will not have joy consistently. Because we have to have all of these things, but we know that everything rises and, fall and falls on what we think, what we take captive, what we allow to stay in our minds. Number three is you struggle with racing thoughts, as I just illustrated. 
sometimes we can come up with them some really big doozies on what's really happening. And you know how embarrassing when you really find out the real truth and what you really had all in your mind? It's like, wow, that was crazy. You will be confused with truth and lies. Because we as humans, when we have a certain narrative going on in our minds, even though maybe it might not be the truth, it's hard to bring a truth in there because that goes against the narrative that's going on in our mind. It doesn't go together. It doesn't fit. You will not be able to live a life of total forgiveness. Your thought process will be sluggish. You will feel as though you are stuck in neutral. Do you ever feel like you're just stuck? And you know, we know when we're in the car, we, we, it's pretty dangerous to uh, be on the freeway and all of a sudden your car goes into neutral. <laughs> but really that's the way it is when we don't take every thought captive. It's a really dangerous thing super dangerous we can we can all of a sudden be in a 10 car pileup in our minds and able to truly help others to grow you will have a big tendency to assume you will never truly feel the freedom in your mind and you will feel out of control so I talk about taking every thought captive as learn to do, but it is really a simple decision of deciding to take every thought captive. And I know, you know, and I know probably we're all kind of like this in a sense sometimes is like, it is just a simple decision. And you think, why can I not just make this decision to do this? And sometimes we make it so hard. We, you know, I, I will come up with excuses. And it's just a simple decision to decide that as each thought comes into my mind, I'm going to take it captive. If it's right, if it's real, if it's not. And you know, sometimes, I'm going to put this in here, is sometimes... We might even think a thought is true or it's right. But sometimes we need to really think on that thought because sometimes we think we're thinking right and that thought is right. But we may not necessarily be in the, the right frame of mind to make that judgment at that point in time so sometimes we need to revisit what we think is true what we feel like that we need to, to take and hold on to as it being right and what we need to let go that's not right so I believe with all my heart this is the place the devil wants us to stay not taking everything captive. Letting lies run through our minds. And as I'm saying, I'm talking to myself too because this is so important and it's like, if we don't do this, it's, it's almost like a life or death thing. It really is. And I'm going, and everybody's been wondering about these balloons up here. And so I wanted to do a little illustration here. Yeah. An illustration here on taking every thought captive. Now I want you to look at these balloons. They have just gone everywhere, right? And this is how our thoughts go. See, that one's either, that's even trying to get away there. It wants to stay. So we have all of these thoughts captive. We have all these thoughts going and 
trying to take them captive. So we have hopeless. How many times do we feel hopeless? Like there's absolutely no way out. And we've gone over everything in our minds and we think we're doing everything right. And we think we've covered all the bases. But we are not. So, taken it captive. Hopeless. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ Amen. who strengthens me. Amen. And I say this scripture so much, all of the time. But I want to reiterate, as we take each thought captive, sometimes it takes a while. It's not just a matter of grabbing holding of that thought, taking it captive, saying a scripture. Sometimes it takes a while, but the word will prevail. It will. So here we have, we're going to take another thought here that's really getting us down. It's rejecting. We feel rejected and like, wow, who even, who even loves me? Who even cares about me? How many people have felt rejected from time to time? Okay. First Corinthians 6 and 17. I am united with the Lord and I am in one spirit with him. God never rejects us. No matter what we do, aren't you glad for his grace and mercy? Amen. His grace and mercy is so awesome. He will never, ever reject us. And so then we have depression. And we're going to take that thought captive. Because depression can sneak in so quickly. And depression affects our whole being. And, you know, we look at depression as laying in bed all day, being sleepy, not wanting to do things. But then there's also the flip side of depression where you have to keep busy so you don't think about anything. But you're just as depressed as the other person that sleeps, but you're working as hard as you possibly can to keep it going. And I think as my husband, I think he mentioned the last time that depression is suppressed anger. So here we go. Let's get another thought. They are. And some days, isn't it like this some days? It is like this some days, isn't it? And aren't there some days where we just say, forget it. Forget it. Unloved. We're going to take that thought captive because we are not unloved. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, I have been bought with a price. I belong to God. He is our Savior. He's our Redeemer. He's our Healer. He's our everything. We are, he is never never going to not show his love for us. So let's see, we're getting there. Shame. And you know, that's a really big one too. Because, whoops, I'm just, I started to say we all fall short and I just about, <laughs> I just about fell. But it's like we all fall short. You know, but thank God for his grace and his mercy that we don't have to carry around shame, 
that he forgives us even after we do stuff over and over and over. He forgives us, but we keep carrying it around. We keep carrying it around and reminding ourselves failure wow I have one more left <laughs> okay so failure is something that I don't think we, re we realize that we let creep in even not even realizing we do sometimes. How many times do you try to do things and unconsciously you really don't even want to try to do that again? But it's not a real big deal, you know? It's not a real big thing. And so even the little failures that you go through day to day they start adding up to be really big failures. And you start not really thinking too much about yourself. Hebrews 4.16, I can find grace and mercy in the time of need. Mm. God is so good. And I think I may have, have, have uh, not mentioned the verse on shame, which is Romans 8, 31. I am free from any condemning charges against me. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Anxiety. <laughs> now we have them all captive. And I know any time we mention anxiety anywhere, any group of people at any given time, this is where a lot of hands go up, you know? And we don't realize it, but really in reality, anxiety, we really do a lot to ourselves to create anxiety. Because really, we don't, have to have anxiety if we don't want to have anxiety you know what is the thing about worrying it's like we can worry just a little bit and if we're not careful it can go right in to anxiety Philippians 4 6 and 7 be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Amen. And it's like, you know, I love this verse. I love these verses. I really do. And I think we all do. But we want God to just come down and just take it away. You know? It's like, you know, we have we live in a world where we have microwaves and fast jets and medicines. We could we could do things very quickly now. You know? And so I think as in this, we want God to just come down and just okay, God, just take away all of this anxiety you know but a lot of scriptures in the Bible are conditional Amen. you know if we be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving you know so we let that go our minds are a powerful thing we are what we think. And man, this is so true. Because I think a lot of times we don't really realize what we think until it starts coming 
flowing out as a big stream and then we realize wow okay so what they say from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh and so there's really nothing that we can really truly hide which God knows everything anyway so let me read the message on Philippians 4 6 through 9 I like to um, this is interesting it's like of course it's not good for um, for salvation and all of that but it breaks it down a lot of times and, and, and gets a story to where you know we can understand it and we can relate it don't fret or worry instead of worrying pray let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers letting God know your concerns before you know it a sense of God's wholeness everything coming together for good will come and settle you down it's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life Summing it up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me what you heard and saw and realized do that in god who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies you know wow i mean and i that's why i just i love reading the message because it tells you exactly what to do but as I said before, we don't take every thought captive and we let them just multiply in our minds, multiply. So by the time we come to them, it's so great that we feel like that we have got to have a miracle pill, as you would say. Or you want God to just reach down and just like, shoo, because you know a lot of times when you look at just at life in general when it comes to emotionally or physically nobody really wants to go through the process of what it takes emotionally or physically that's the last thing on our mind we would really rather and you know yes God does give us miracles he, he does wonderful miracles and healings but we would really rather sometimes I think have a healing from God just for the sake of oh I don't want to go through open heart surgery or I don't want to go through getting that total hip done or I don't want to go through you know loss of therapy and recovery and all of this that we have to go through but God is an awesome God and he's given us tools for everything Amen. I'm trying to think of that I can't remember that scripture right off hand but I think my husband used it in a sermon about Paul about you know he knows what to do and he wants to do it and then he, Romans 7 Romans 7 just okay maybe somebody can look that up while I'm talking here and, and read it for me but it's like we know what we're supposed to do and we want to do what's right but then we do what we hate <laughs> you know and then we get ourselves in a big mess okay somebody had that scripture <laughs> okay that's all right we are so capable of doing so much damage to ourselves all by ourselves. 
we don't need anybody else. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> we have become selfish, not wanting to take it captive. It's see what the Bible says and see what God thinks. We will decide on our own. We are our own masters and we are the decision makers. Pride is an evil thing that slips up. So as we look even in the Apostle Paul, <laughs> because, you know, sometimes we look at ourselves and think, man, I wish I could do it like this person or that person. But the Bible brings out everything, you know, and it's like Apostle Paul was, he was a great man, but he had struggles just like we did. <clears throat> so we want to walk in the role. God lets us. He doesn't make us do anything. He created us to have our own will of our own. We make a conscious decision what we are going to do, and he lets us. And, you know, God's always been like that. He's always just let us do, you know, have our own will and do what we want to do. He's there to help us. Any time, he's there to help us. He's there to help us. You know, with our thoughts and our feelings and all of our decisions, and we must, we must use that. Number one is choosing truth over lies. Amen. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. It's John 8 32. And as I think my husband has mentioned this before, it's a, it's a small T, so it's all truth. And there's a lot of truth that, man, it really hurts, you know, because a lot of truth, and I don't know as if we will really know all truth about ourselves because we don't even know how wicked our hearts are, God says, you know, but if we don't know the truth and we don't accept it, when we don't really put into the action, then it doesn't really make us free. You have to know, want to know the truth. <clears throat> and you have to be able to take every thought captive. When we feel, when we know that truth, it's got to be there. It's got to come. If you try to take every thought captive, you will look through the lens of, eye, of lies. You must compare it to the word of God. You must want the truth with all of your heart. Some people will continue believing lies, but it fills their victim narrative. Yeah, that's right. Number two is deciding and making the choice to take every thought captive. You have to make the choice and stick with your decision. There has to be a beginning, that moment in time when you decide you want to do the right thing. That's right. That's good. And I know there are many times when we decide we want to do the right thing, but then something soon changes our mind. Number three is capt, capture each thought as it comes into your mind. Compare it to the word of God. Example, I am a failure, I can't do anything. We know that's not a truth. We know that's not a good thought. We know that. So instantly we have to back it up with I can do all things yes. through Christ which strengthens yes. me Amen. this is taking the thought captive and putting it against the word of God and rejoicing 
that thought with the truth. And sometimes we go through days where we'll take a thought captive and five minutes later we've got to take that same thought captive all over again. You know, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. And that's where, you know, the consistency day after day after day, it's very easy after you've gone through a half a day and maybe taken the same thought captive 35 times (laughs) and you're thinking, good grief, you know, and it's easy to give up, just easy to give in. It's easy to give in to those lies in your mind that you're not going to be able to overcome that thought. It's so easy. But some thoughts, we've just got to keep letting them go over and over in our minds and taking it captive every time. Every time. Being consistent, being willing to work hard, being diligent, learning and transforming your mind is not an easy task. Research the world and word and find all the scriptures you need and keep them handy. Know who you are in Christ. Now I have these scriptures I think at the end of your handout there. And I am um, read these every day. I am accepted. John one and twelve. I am God's child. John 15 and 15, I am Christ's friend. Romans 5 and 1, I have been justified. 1 Corinthians 6, 17, I am united with the Lord and I am one spirit with him. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, I have been bought with a price, I belong to God. Ephesians 1 and 1, I am a saint. Ephesians 1 and 5, I have been adopted as God's child. Ephesians 2.18, I have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit. Colossians 1.14, I have been redeemed and forgiven of all my sins. Colossians 2.10, I am complete in Christ. And under, I am secure. Romans 8.1 and 2, I am free forever. Romans 8.28, I am assured that all things work together for good. And this one, Romans 8, 28, we've got to realize that everything that we do, even if it's not necessarily good, God brings it around. He brings it around to our good. And, um, you know, it's like, the scripture, you know, we feel like that everything's going to be good for us down here. But the thing of it is, is not everything is good, right. but God's going to bring everything that's good. Because, right. you know, his, his full intentions are for us to make it to heaven. That's right. For us to live a victorious yeah. life. That's right. In the end, that we make it. Yeah. And so he's going to do everything for our good because he wants us to make it that's the most important thing not if we're happy 24 7 not if we're physically okay all the time not if we're emotionally okay 24 7 not if things are going on and we're having to deal with this and this and this no we're going to make it to heaven and that is that's what he wants that is what he wants Romans 8.31, I am free from any condemning charges against me. Mm-hmm. Right. Romans 8.35, I cannot be separated from the love of Amen. God. Amen. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22, I have been established, anointed, and sealed by God. Amen. Colossians 3 and 3, I am hidden with Christ in God. Philippians 1 and 6, I am confident that the good work that God has begun in me will be perfected. God doesn't ever give up on us. It's like, yes, sometimes we stumble and we fall 
and God's not able to continue as he would like to continue, but he never gives up on us. He waits for us to come around. He waits. It's so awesome. Philippians 3 and 20. I am a citizen of heaven. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Mm -mm -mm. So when the devil comes around telling us that you are really crazy, <laughs> we do have a sound mind. Now, sometimes we do stuff that makes us look crazy. <laughs> But God has given us a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Hebrews 4.16. I can find grace and mercy in time of need. And wow, am I so glad about that. Amen, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. God is that one that no matter what, he's right there. Amen, that's right. Anytime, day or night. 1 John 5 and 18, I am born of God and the evil one cannot touch me. Thank you, Jesus. I am significant. Matthew 5, 13 and 14, I am salt and light of the earth. John 15, 1 and 5, I am a branch of the true vine, a channel of his life. Acts 1 and 8, I am a personal witness of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.16, I am God's temple. 2 Corinthians 5.17, I am a minister of reconciliation for God. 2 Corinthians 6 and 1, I am a co-worker. Ephesians 2 and 6, I am seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. Ephesians 2 and 10, I am God's workmanship. So anytime you start looking around and wish you could be like this one or this one or this one, remember, we are all a workmanship. That's right. God created every one of us yes. individually. Yes. Amen. We all have our own thumbprint. Yes. Nobody else has it. So, you know, when you just think about that logistic of how God created us, that must be pretty special. We must all be pretty special for God to give us all our own thumbprint. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 3 and 12, I may approach God with freedom and confidence. Oh, thank you, God. Yeah. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ Amen. who strengthens me. Aren't you so glad? Amen. Aren't you so glad that we can do all things through Christ? Now, sometimes our thoughts tell us that we cannot. Sometimes our thoughts tell us that we're going to be a failure. Sometimes our thoughts tell us that we are not loved. Sometimes our thoughts tell us that we have just got to keep right on with all that anxiety because that's just what's been dealt to us in life and that's just what's going to happen. Yeah. But we know through Christ we don't have to carry around our shame. Right. We do not have to do that. Right. We do not have to carry around depression and live it every day because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Isn't he good? And you know, if we could just, I know I've, I, I've named several thoughts and I've talked about several different scenarios and I know we all have our things that we fight with every day you know and so 
If we could just think about what those thoughts are and lining it up to the word of God, to what he has given us, to what he has given us to be overcomers, to be more than just an average or below average person trying to make it through life with all of the racing thoughts and all of the negative thoughts and all the untrue thoughts that we let lie, that we don't take captive. You know, and so I, I, I know you guys have already thought about the things that you think about, and this is what I have wanted to, you know, for you to do because we all have this set of things that we struggle with and some will be very different than others. And you know, others will look at, at, at different ones and think, well, I don't struggle with that. Well, you may not struggle with that. Right. It may be no big deal to you. Right. But what this other person struggles with may be very real. That's right. Because we all have childhood scripts, as my husband mentioned that last week, we talked a lot about that. And this plays a big part in what goes through our minds, what we struggle with, whether we struggle with rejection or depression or being unloved or, you know, anything like that has a whole lot to do with what we've been through, what we've had to deal with in life, what we've been dealt to with in life. And so we all have the circumstances are all very real. It's just as real to one person as it is to another. And so I, I want us to just bow our heads and pray and ask God to show us and to help us to take every thought captive because it is a real thing. It's a real serious thing. And as I've said, I have not conquered this. But God is here tonight in an awesome way, ready to hear all of the struggles, all of the thoughts that go through our minds. God, in your name, Jesus. God, help. God, help us all, Lord. God, help us to do, Lord, what we know to do, God. You have given us your word, Lord. You have given us your scripture. You have given us everything, Lord. You have given us all the tools, God. And each person, Lord, in their own way, in their life, they have their own set of thoughts that they struggle with every day. And God, help us, Lord, to take what we know to do, God. Take these tools, God, and come against every thought that's not true, to come against every lie. and compare it, God, to your word, Jesus. Help us to know the difference, God, between a lie and the truth. Help us to not be deceived. We thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. God is such a good God. Such an awesome God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Years ago, I was thinking over there, actually, about 45 years ago, I heard a message by Mark Hamby. Some of you may remember him. He's no longer with us, but his message was calling in the cats. 
and he brought an illustration of when he was raised on a farm that a mama cat showed up one day and they just let it stay around because the kids was wanting that cat and uh, about three months later there was about ten cats there and they let them stay around and about three months later there was about twenty cats there and they used the scripture about gird up the loins of your mind the reproductive area because if we don't bring those thoughts captive that come I am worthless I can't make it and you know the list goes on if we don't grab a hold of that and capture it and then replace you don't just capture it it's a two part process you capture it and then you begin to speak truth and what my wife dealt with here tonight is a major key in emotional healing until we learn how to take every thought captive and replace it with what the word says will never be emotionally healed. Yeah. So what she said tonight was the key cog in the wheel uh, to make sure that it works. Um, I know last time I was here, Pastor kind of wanted some transparency. And, and, and if, we'll keep it clean, but what, uh, what thought hit you this week or today that was just random and out of nowhere? Anybody, what about volunteers? Any volunteers? Sister? Exactly. Okay, what hit her this week? Yes, yeah, she knows her sons with her parents. And I think they raised her okay. No, I'm teasing. But yet she has this fear or thoughts. I wonder if he's safe. He's away from mom and dad. Even though I know my mom and dad good, do a good job, you've been bombarded with those fears this week. So I'm glad you brought that up. So what the process that she taught tonight is I take that thought captive. I'm not, even though it feels real, I grab a hold of it. I'm not going to believe that. He's in safe hands, plus he's God's child. And so it's an active process of bringing this one into captivity and them speaking and releasing the truth about the situation. Very good. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, Van? Uh, uh, I thought that happened to me immediately. But I will say that I think the hardest thing about you know doing what you're talking about is actually being aware of the thoughts that come. You know, because as she had mentioned, uh, a lot of times it comes from a subconscious, um, you know, whatever right. situation. Like a childhood you. script, something that happened yeah. to you. And so, you know, with that being said, if you're a person who is consistently having these negative, uh, you know, thoughts or And so what Van said is very, very true. When those negative thoughts come, like I'm not going to make it or I'm a failure or I might as well quit because it's too tough, those thoughts are going to come because of what we talked about last month, the childhood scripts. I told you about my father uh, and different things along that line with rejection. So those thoughts will hit. So that is normal. That means you're a normal human being. But it also means there's a scriptural formula for grabbing a hold of that and getting a hold of it and then begin to release what the Bible says. I am valuable. I am worth it. God shed his blood for me. And the list goes on. Ask my wife to respond on this. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, because a lot of times you'll respond and you'll think, the reason I responded like that, I had to be thinking this, but you didn't really know you had that thought. And so a lot of times it's, you know, after you respond to a certain thing or, you know, you 
say something, you realize, okay, in order for me to have said this or responded like this, I must have had this thought subconsciously, you know, and then, you know, just taking that from there. But I understand that. One thing we must keep in mind, this is very key. One thing we must keep in mind when it comes to thought, Satan does not have access to your mind. you say that louder pastor <laughs> he does not have access to your mind so a lot of stuff we blame on the devil and so a lot of this stuff that comes is from our personal experiences and things that happen of, of rejection unworthiness whatever the case might be and so uh, a lot of times we'll get busy rebuking Satan when God's already given us a formula is grab that thought captive Exactly, casting down imaginations, that's what it is. And then releasing or speaking the truth of what the word says. Very good, Van. Anybody else? Somebody else, just uh, open up here. Don't tell them if you had a thought about killing somebody. I don't want to need to know that. But just some thought that just hits you out of nowhere random this week that, it's like, where did that come from? Anybody? Okay. In the back row there. <laughs> she pointed at her. <laughs> well, um, I was thinking this morning, going into um, the parking lot where I work, and I thought, um, you know, Lanya, you better go ahead and declare your retirement date because something could bad could happen at this job. Nobody likes Day that's real. Yes. And I was just thinking that uh, this morning. Amen. And, and these days it's real. Very real. Mm -hmm. um, back the area was I, was I was raised not far from Springfield, Missouri, just this week, you know, you heard it, they got that guy, came in uh, tactical, tactical gear and a rifle coming right into Walmart there, right there uh, by a friend of mine's church. Uh, just right down the street from Todd Johnson Church. I don't know if you know him. And so there's a natural fear. And um, uh, in, a car, in a crowd, a car can backfire going by, and people are running from cover these days. So we have that fear. But we also can't hide because that lets the devil win. We have to know that I'm covered with his blood. I'm protected by him and that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper, that I'm a child of God. Amen. Uh, I know, like when it comes to flying, uh, some, somebody, they're afraid to go on the airplane, and um, they'll say, uh, well, if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But what if it's the pilot's time to go? <laughs> but people have these fears. What's some other thoughts that uh, in this session here tonight that, to get freedom and wholeness, uh, what thoughts has hit you? Okay. Anybody else? Okay, sister over here in the purple top, or I don't know if it's a whole dress. I just only see the top part, so purple there. Go ahead. Uh, this is not this week, but uh, there has been times that. I remember when I first uh, heard about taking your mind captive. <laughs> your thoughts captive? Yeah, your thoughts captive. And um, I started with uh, quoting scriptures and singing songs. And I remember when it first started, it was like a bombardment on my mind. It just kept coming mm -hmm. and coming and coming. And then I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to keep singing, and singing, and singing. <laughs> yeah. And quoting the scripture. And uh, the one uh, that I quoted was the one about the casting down out of imaginations. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, another thought, too, was um, uh, I remember when uh, 
I had major insecurities. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the Lord told me, he said, you're not insecure. He said, I'm your confidence. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that just changed my whole outlook mm -hmm. on that. And I was able to uh, get over those thoughts mm -hmm. that come in your Good mind. feedback, good comments. Amen. Anybody else? Something just to share? Because this whole series is on how to gain emotional freedom. And until we learn, like she said, how to grab every thought captive, this is not just in church service. It's on uh, seven days a week, 24-7, 365. We have to continuously take these thoughts captive and bring them under the obedience of Christ. And then that's only half of it. Take it captive, and then you replace or send it back out with the truth of the word of God. Amen. We've already prayed, but I want us just to get really serious and pray right now. Say, oh, God, from this point on, I'm making a willful decision that when any thought comes to me that is not correct, that it's based on something from my past, and it's a natural reaction or maybe an action that a parent or someone modeled to me and it's not correct and it's not right. God, I vow before you here tonight, uh, I make a conscious decision here tonight that I'm going to uh, keep a picture of this balloon in my mind that, I'm a, that when the voice comes that I'm a failure that you should have known better. You've made too many mistakes. I'm going to grab a hold of that thought and I'm going to bring it captive and I'm going to replace it with the word of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray out loud right now. Make a conscious decision here tonight and say, God, I'm not going to get uh, depend on you and wait till uh, I, I talk in tongues again on Sunday. But Lord, every single day, you have shown me in your word my responsibility. From this point on, I'm going to begin to take every thought captive. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm going to replace it with the word of God. And I'm going forward in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And what we're talking about here tonight is it goes beyond the shout and God doing great things on Sunday. This is my responsibility throughout the week. Amen. And over time, my wife has mentioned, over time, there goes a thought. It's taken off. It needs to get captive again. I'm not a failure. I'm taking it captive. Right. Amen. I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. Amen. If another one pops out of there, we'll take it captive too. That's how life is throughout the day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Pastor, come on up. Thank you so much for uh, allowing us, and my wife, to present this session here tonight. Amen. Could we put our hands together and thank the Lord for what we've heard tonight? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, go ahead and mark your calendars now on September the 17th. September 17th. Brother and Sister Smith will be back with us for session number four. Uh, we're intending to go six sessions. Uh, so we will have September, October, and November uh, to close out this uh, series of teaching. About gaining emotional freedom so uh, the other dates are yet to be set uh, but we do have the September date of the 17th uh, confirmed so uh, be mindful of that I was thinking um, as I was listening tonight uh, and I'll share this quickly and then we'll go um, but my mom has had uh, two major episodes of cancer breast cancer and then um, stage 3b colon cancer um, within the last decade 
and uh, all together that has resulted in chemo and some 17 surgeries, uh, some of which were major, uh, uh, major, major surgeries. And um, I, I felt impressed one time. I was uh, talking with them, and I, I just shared uh, a little thought. And I leaned up to Brother Smith earlier in the service, and I told him whenever Sister Smith was talking about bringing that I don't know where it's at. It's in the bag. That's where it ought to stay. But the thought of anxiety. Anxiety. Okay. Uh, bringing that one into captivity. And uh, the Lord impressed me uh, with uh, this saying, and I shared it with my folks, and she even shared it with her uh, oncologist. And the simple saying is this, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't take you anywhere. Silah. Amen. So whoever it is that has a tendency like Brother Dormer to be a little bit of a worrier, I'm not a real high-strung emotional type of guy. I'm pretty level and consistent but boy under the surface sometimes I can worry but I got to bring it into captivity and I got to replace it with the word of God wasn't that good tonight amen, amen. would you mind standing with me right now <laughs> praise the Lord father we love you and we thank you we're ever mindful of your goodness and we praise you tonight God for the truth of your word that has been expounded before us. I pray that you would help us all now to not only be hearers of this word, but Lord, I saw so many people taking notes tonight. I heard amens and I saw people shaking their head in agreement. And Lord, we've listened and we've received it, but I pray that you would help us to be doers of this word. Help us, God, to create a new lifestyle a new paradigm of thinking God that more closely matches up with what your word tells us we should do and I pray that you would let the mind of Christ dwell in each and every one of us and I thank you for it in Jesus mighty name let the church say amen amen, amen. amen. 